Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Lauren. And my name is Asanta. And Asanta and I are trained smoking cessation facilitators and members of the Community Health Improvement Department here at the University of Maryland Medical Center. Yep. And this is our fifth Facebook Live smoking Yay. cessation session. Um, and it's actually in partnership with the Baltimore City Health Department. And so over the past four months, we've brought to you several topics about mm -hmm. smoking cessation or quitting smoking in an effort to help you on your journey. And so today is our fifth, and we're just really excited about that. We've got yeah. one more left. One more session. We're going to miss it, but maybe we'll be back. We never maybe know. We'll be back. <laughs> so as we go through the sessions today, please join us by adding your zip code. I'm sorry, your zip code. Um, and your comments and questions. And if we don't get back to your comments and questions during the live feed, we will get back once it has ended. Also, today, we're going to discuss mm -hmm. nicotine replacement therapies and counseling support, as well as community resources to help you become a successful quitter. All righty. And also, please, 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 please let your friends, family members know, especially if you are not the smoker yourself, please make sure you reach out to them and let them know that we are doing this. Again, this is our fifth Facebook Live session, but you can go back through the University of Maryland Medical Center's Facebook page mm -hmm. and look through each month of this year thus far and see what we've talked about um, to see any information that, you know, a lot of you may need. And we've, we've seen some of your feedback, so we're really grateful and happy yeah. that, you know, <laughs> this is beneficial to you. Yep. And so with that being said, let's get started. Let's get started. Shall we? So Lauren, yes. I think it's best with our topics today if we start talking about nicotine replacement or NRT or the medications to help a person quit smoking because, and then move into other options such as counseling, support, and community resources. Absolutely. Okay. Because it's been, it's been proven that medications most likely will work if you're doing some type of support at yes. the same time. Okay, so yeah, let's get started with the treatments. Let's start with the treatments first. Yep. So nicotine replacement therapies are what they're called, and so they're actually used in an effort to help you quit. And studies have shown that when using nicotine replacement therapies versus not using anything at all when you're quitting, mm -hmm. it nearly doubles your chances of actually quitting smoking. And mm -hmm. so the best time to start these nicotine replacement therapies is as soon as you decide to quit. Makes sense. And so going forward, I just want to say we may use the term NRTs, which is just the acronym or shortened version for nicotine mm -hmm. replacement therapies. So some NRT forms that we're going to talk about today, we won't talk about all of them, but we will get into some of them that are kind of the most common ones. But they do include patches, gum, lozenges, inhalers, and nasal sprays. And a lot of times they are sometimes targeted towards those people who are severe dependents or heavy smokers. And so what that means to be a heavy smoker is if you smoke a pack or more a day, okay. um, if you, within five minutes of getting up in the morning, you have to have that cigarette, maybe you still smoke even when you're sick, or possibly you wake up from smoking in the middle of the, I'm sorry, you wake up from sleeping in the middle of the night to take to have a cigarette. And then also you use cigarettes to ease the withdrawal symptoms from quitting and starting to quit cigarettes. And basically, again, what we mentioned, every time you smoke and then you stop smoking for a certain amount of hours, mm -hmm. your body tries, your body is trying to go through the quitting process, but then again, that nicotine comes in and pulls you back in. And so just a reminder of what these uh, symptoms are when you're trying to quit, you've got headache, you've got tingling in your hands and feet, sweating, nausea, you've got intestinal cramping, and a lot of these things, insomnia, a lot of oh, these wow. things, I mean, it's understandable why you may want to try and go back to smoking that smoking, cigarette. Yeah. So, again, nicotine replacement therapies, are, or NRTs, are usually targeted towards heavy smokers. But that does not mean that if you don't smoke that much a day, that you can't use them. It just, they may not be as helpful if you don't use that much nicotine or take that much nicotine in your body in the first place. What we always suggest is that, you know, we're going to say this a lot today, so <laughs> we apologize, but it's very important that yes. you hear it. You must first speak with your doctor before you use any of these therapies or medications because it's important and we want to make sure that you're doing what's best and healthiest for you. And so make sure you talk to your doctor about that before you even get started. That's a great point, and yes, please do that. Yeah. So nicotine replacement therapies, NRTs, relieve the physical withdrawal symptoms that we just went over. And they help you focus on the emotional and mental aspects of quitting. So they kind of take that burden off of the physicality, which you can't really control, and help you think about, okay, 
that's off my brain. I don't have to think about that right now. But what else can I do to help myself quit smoking? Well, for instance, we talked about the heavy smokers. Maybe one of the things was that first thing in the morning, and we've talked about this before, Yeah. that five minutes after you wake up, you have to have the cigarette. Well, now that you've got the symptoms off your mind because you're using the NRTs, you can think, hmm, well, maybe I'll just run straight to the kitchen and get a tall, cold glass of water to kind of change my habits of taking that cigarette first thing in the morning. Or perhaps you're one of those people who likes to wake up in the middle of the night and take that cigarette. Maybe give yourself a little game. And it seems... It seems trivial or uh, juvenile, but yeah. not necessarily if you're trying to get yourself better and healthy and off of the nicotine. So say you wake up in the middle of the night and you have to use the restroom, make a game out of it and try and get to the restroom and back in bed as quickly as possible without stubbing your toe and without taking that extra cigarette. And that way you can kind of try to change your habits in an effort to help you quit smoking. Yeah. Eventually that little game will become a habit, right? A habit, exactly. Yeah. Change your habits. And a positive habit. So Lauren, just a quick question. Can you use NRT or nicotine replacement therapies while still using tobacco products? No, you cannot. And so we just want to make that clear. Um, when you're using a nicotine replacement therapy, and as we go forward, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about a couple of them, they actually contain the nicotine. So if you're still smoking, you're receiving that nicotine. And then if you're taking a nicotine replacement therapy, it's not actually replacing anything because you're still smoking. Yeah. So you just have, you're giving yourself a double dose, which is going to make it even harder for you to quit in the long run. So if you do decide to quit, do not start the nicotine replacement therapies until after you have officially quit smoking. Yeah, that sucks. Um, so let's start. Let's start with how each one works. Let's okay. Go into patches, which can be found over the counter or through a, a prescription. prescription. Mm -hmm. And what the patches do is they give you a small, steady dose of nicotine, and it's absorbed through your skin. And what you do is, um, what it is, it's going to slowly wean you off okay. of the nicotine. And so you start at a specific dose, which is kind of similar to the doses that you were taking before. So if you took a pack a day, you make sure that the patches, and you read the directions on the back of these carefully, and again, consult with your physician. And you start with that dosage, and eventually, once you get used to that, you feel like you can go decrease and decrease until eventually you're not wearing the patches anymore. Hmm. They are daily patches, so every day you put on a new one. They've got 16-hour patches and 24-hour patches, um, and you can choose either or. It depends on what type of smoker you are. If you're the smoker who wakes up in the morning and you have to get that cigarette within the first five minutes, it's better for you to use, well, speak again with your physician, but it might be better for you to use a 24-hour patch because a 16-hour patch isn't delivering the nicotine throughout the night which may make you crave the nicotine first thing in the morning. And point. so always put it on clean skin, clean, dry, dry. and preferably look with less hair. So that's why you usually see it on the top of the arm or the back. And the patches have been approved by the FDA for th um, three to five months use. So oh. that is one of the first options for NRTs. And then we have the gum. Okay. And so honestly, I didn't really know exactly how this one worked until I became a facilitator and dove, dove more into it to see what it was. <laughs> but you chew the um, nicotine replacement gum, and what it is, it delivers the nicotine. After you chew it for a little bit, you're going to get this peppery feeling or tingly feeling in your okay. mouth as soon as you start chewing it. And then once you get that feeling, you transfer the gum in between your cheek and your gum, that's a little confusing. Yeah. <laughs> you transfer the, the chewing gum in between your cheek and your actual gum. And so what is then done, the nicotine is then absorbed into your mucous membrane, your cheeks. Um, and that's how you receive the nicotine. Now, that's until you lose the taste. Once you lose the taste, you put the gum back in your teeth. You chew it again until it gets that same peppery taste and feeling and tingly feeling. And you put it back in um, in between your gum and your, and your cheek. Okay. And so, again, this option is without a prescription. You do not need a prescription with this. However, we will always suggest speak with your, your physician, your doctor, before you go ahead and do this. Mm -hmm. Now, the gum is fast-acting, so that's always a good thing, especially mm -hmm. if, you, you know, you make that decision, you want to quit, um, and you're not sure if you'll be able to stick with that decision. You know, the fast-acting helps in an effort to get the nicotine into your system without leaving space for you to say, you know, this isn't working, let me go grab a cigarette. So that's always a good option for you. And it also allows you to um, 
control the amount of nicotine that you're taking in. So you can choose how many pieces of gum that you take that day. However, usually you start with one to two pieces per hour and then decrease as needed. But do not take any more than 24 pieces of gum in a day. And you're going to do this about three to six months max. And again, always speak with your physician before doing that. So this isn't like chewing this, normal. It's not like chewing regular no. gum. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, when some people hear gum, they might just think, oh, I'm going to pop it in my mouth, chew for a couple, you know, yeah. however long and spit it out. So we want to make sure. Also, if these, per these can be purchased over the counter. So yes. you want to also, if you go buy them free will without the um, doctor's approval, talk to the, your pharmacist as well. They yes. will be able to help you um, navigate through the system and help you make sure you're putting them on right and yeah. make sure you're, you're, you're taking the right dosage. Also, I forgot to mention, so I'm glad you brought that up, that when you're chewing the gum, after mm -hmm. you put it in between your cheek and your gum, you have it sit there about 20 to 20, I'm sorry, 25 oh. to 30 minutes. So it actually has to stay there for a certain period of time until it loses its taste and then you start the chewing process again. Okay, makes so, sense. Yeah. So now we're going to move on to the lozenges. And like Asante said, these are similar to products that we use on the regular, but they're, I don't, we don't want you to just think that and use them as if they are the regular products. So the lozenges, placed in the mouth like hard candy, however, they are not like hard candy. Most importantly, do not chew them. Do not bite them because hmm. that will give you the increased dose of nicotine if you were to just chew it and swallow it and call it a day. Interesting. And that can lead to something which we've talked about, which is nicotine poisoning. Yes. And that is something we do not want for you. So make sure you're always following these um, products per the descriptions on the back of the container. So the lozenge, you place it in your mm -hmm. mouth, and the nicotine is slowly released, and it's absorbed, again, through your cheeks. And you shouldn't eat, or and actually this is with the gum as well, you shouldn't eat or drink 15 minutes before or during the process of using these, these two products, the gum and the lozenge. Um, it's just important to make sure that you fully absorb the full effect of the medication. Hmm. Okay. And so this also, the lozenge as well, it gives you a decreasing schedule. So you can go from like one to two, uh, one lozenge every one to two hours okay. for six weeks and then one lozenge every two to four hours for eight weeks and so on and so on until you're not using, you're only using one lozenge a day. Okay. So again, unlike hard candy, don't chew, don't bite, and let it completely dissolve in your mouth before, you know, don't spit it out, you know, whatever it may be, just let it go through the process of completely dissolving in your mouth. However, do not use more than five lozenges in six hours and no more than 20 lozenges per day. So Lauren, you talked about that. Let me ask you this, because a lot of our users or people we come in contact actually use smokeless tobacco. Yes. So things like chewing and things like that. So does NRT help with users who use smokeless tobacco? So the FDA has approved all these products mm -hmm. for use of helping to quit smoking. However, they have not been approved for smokeless tobacco. Okay. However, studies have shown, though, that the lozenges are actually probably at this point the best option for smokeless tobacco users. Okay. So that's always something that they can use in the process until it is FDA approved. However, the best way to find out what you should use is talk to your doctor. <laughs> they will be able to help you in your journey to quit smoking as well. Good. All right. So um, one thing that's very important, there's no type of NRT that is best for everyone. And also, there's none that's better than the other. So what you want to think about is how you use cigarettes, how you smoke, and what your process is and what will work best for you. And then also a very important thing is you want to make sure that you dispose of these products properly because again mm. nicotine um, poison is a is real and it can lead to death unfortunately and so we want to make sure one not only that you know you don't harm yourself but that you're not harming if you have a child in the home or an animal a little fur baby that you may have at home with you, we want to make sure that you are taking care of them as well. So do not dispose of them in open trash cans, whatever it may be, because you may have received majority of the nicotine in the product, but when you compare that to the size of a child or a small animal, that a nicotine could be enough to knock them out. So we want to make sure that you dispose of them properly as well. And also, another important fact, and I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but you just have to be mindful that there are always risks when you use medication. Of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, therapies such as these. Nicotine replacement has the possibility of becoming 
um, a dependence, uh, you becoming dependent on it as well. Okay. So basically, that'd be you transferring your addiction from smoking cigarettes to the nicotine replacement therapies. That's why it's very important that you follow directions on the back of the product as well as speak with your physician about it and to make sure that you're only using it for as long as you need because we want to make sure that you stay healthy, you quit smoking, but that you stay healthy in the process. So that's yeah. Those are really good points, especially the disposing of them properly. Yeah, we want to take care of everybody in the household. Yep. So, Lauren, before we jump into counseling support, one last question. What about prescription medications, taking NRT and prescription medications at the same time? I think I know what you're going to say, but are you, are our followers out here? They want to know. <laughs> they want to know. Well, <laughs> they want to know. Well, first, let's talk about the prescription medications because okay. I, if you notice, we didn't mention them in the nicotine replacement because they actually don't replace the nicotine in your system. They are medications that are used to um, combat or work against the aspects in your in your brain. Okay. So it kind of comes from a different area or a different angle. And for instance, I know the most famous one is Chantix mm -hmm. that everybody is um, aware of. And what Chantix does is it interferes with nicotine receptors in your brain. And so basically what that means is it lessens the pleasure of smoking as well as reduces the symptoms of withdrawal. So one thing I want to mention is that not everybody can use Chantix. So I know we're a broken record, guys. Talk to your doctor. <laughs> it's very important that you talk to your doctor before you take any of these. Well, you're going to have to talk to your doctor anyway because Chantix is a prescribed a drug. Yep. So you have to get a prescription for it anyway. So you make sure you talk with him. And, and while you're taking these drugs as well, make sure you keep your doctor informed about how they're affecting you, how you feel, in case there are any symptoms and side effects that may be causing you to feel not so great. Um, there's also Zyban, which is, you know, well known as Wellbutrin or Bupropion. It acts on the chemicals in the brain related to nicotine cravings. Hmm. And so it works best if you start that one. Now this is interesting because you had your question before about can you take your nicotine replacement therapies while smoking? Okay. The answer to that was no. However, with Wellbutrin, it is best if you take it one to two weeks before you start the quitting process. So that way it gets in your system and it starts weaning you off those cravings before you even quit. That's and good. so all adults, uh, nicotine replacement therapies, and I'm not going to mention where the prescription medications are good for everybody because they're not. You have to speak with your doctor about that. The um, nicotine replacement therapies have been approved for all adults except pregnant women, of course, uh -huh. um, and teens. So if you are a smoker and you're not necessarily at that point where you want to quit, but you're pregnant and you want to stop smoking, of course, during the pregnancy Pregnancy. period, do not use nicotine replacement therapies. Unfortunately, ladies, that is something where you can only use your willpower and your, your um, counseling if you'd like to do yeah. that. But... It, Nicotine replacement therapies are for adults who are not pregnant and just basically for adults, no teens. Okay. So that's what we have for nicotine replacement and our medications. That was a lot of great information, Lauren. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. I think it's time that we jump into counseling support. I think so. And the and methods that I mentioned today, they are all proven methods that work with advice, discussion, encouragement, and support to help a person su quit successfully. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just jump into a few, to name a few, such as individual counseling. Okay. So I'm a smoker, or say for, say, for instance, Lauren's a smoker, you just call up, we're going to talk to you about different facilities throughout Baltimore City and Maryland today that offer counseling support, but this is a one-on-one -on -one session, face-to-face, -face, with a trained smoking counselor or facilitator who they sit there, they help you figure out reasons why you want to quit, they'll help you create a quit plan. Um, basically what works best for you. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that's good. And you have that person to yourself, so it's more so if you like to be private and, yes. you know, in a session, that's, that's a great option for you. So the next counseling session is group therapy. It's sort of like AAA, Alcohols Anonymous, mm -hmm. where you go into a group setting and you share and discuss different options, techniques, reasons, mm -hmm. and even the reason why you started smoking. Moral support. Moral support. Peer yeah. support, moral support. You definitely get, you learn other behavior techniques from everyone else. You get, yeah. you get to share that. And as well, motivation. I, yeah, I always know, I, I just always know that it's best for me when I have someone who's going through it with mm -hmm. me. Because not only do they 
they know they're, they want to help me as badly as they want to help themselves, but they actually know what it feels like to go through what we're going through. So that's yeah. a really great option as well. Yep. And usually in these group therapies, you may find people who have quit multiple times mm -hmm. and they can share yeah. their downfalls to relapse and how they pick back up and things that's like really that. That's really good. Group therapy, I think, is one, is a, one of the better options. options. If you're not that private person, and if you are, it's the other options still work as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a newer... Um, counseling that has emerged recently is telephone counseling. Okay. This is usually for people who are, have limited resources and time mm -hmm. and they can't get to a traditional class all, always or they don't have you know, a vehicle or it's too far. Telephone counseling and quit lines provide support and encouragement to individuals who smoke and want to quit. So quick question. You mentioned you know, individuals who may not have the time. Are these quit lines available 24-7 or... So we have several that are available 24-7, just like the Maryland quit line, and we'll talk about that in a second. That's okay. available 24-7 at all times, different. They come in different Spanish-speaking, English-speaking, but we'll get into that in a few. Okay. But that's a great question. So this method is helpful for people, like I said, who have a limited time and finances. But we also have a newer technology It's that evolved with the evolution of just technology. New <laughs> methods have emerged on how to deliver smoking cessation through apps and text messaging. Oh, yes. Yep. Smartphones, internet, and social media allow for facilitators to connect with people on a wide range yeah. as well as an easier way when, like this right now. Yeah. We're doing cessation live through Facebook. Hi, guys. <laughs> and we're connecting with however many people we're connecting with. But over the time, you know, hundreds to thousands of people have seen this and they're able to get the help that they need. Yep. Now, about the technology, just, you know, something a lot of us now, there are some people who are out there who are not, you know, connected to their phones like most of us. But for yep. the most, most people are connected to their phones. So you mentioned the text messaging. That's mm -hmm. a really awesome option for people or even just constant like positive information being sent out to people through programs mm -hmm. something so that way even if you're thinking it you may never know you might just get that message those first morning people five for five yep. minutes after you wake up you get that message in the morning and then you're like that's right i'm not supposed to be smoking <laughs> and you go about your day so that's really good yep i was just about to talk about it. it's called motivational messaging okay so that's what it is and when you have these apps they're all they automatically just come through your phone like hey mm -hmm. sunshine good morning Thanks for being smoke-free and different things that will get you on your day. They mm -hmm. can come during lunchtime, during time. You can set it the way you want. Interesting. That's the way that the, the, the new technology has allowed us to do that. Um, it's very convenient. It's a push of a button support if you need to talk to a counselor then. You can also visit the website, um, smokefree.gov. So that's www.smokefree.gov slash backslash smokefree text mm -hmm. if you want to get that started. Also, you can go into your app store, whether it's iPhone or um, Android, Android um, Google to Play. Google Play to um, get that, see if they have any other apps. Some are free and some cost. Just definitely make sure you read the disclosures with that. And I just want to clarify, that mm -hmm. was uh, smokefree.gov forward slash smokefree T-X-T. Yes. Not T-E-X-T. T-X-T. So we just want to make sure you get the information. <laughs> Thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So, today we're also going to talk about non-traditional support, such okay. as some things that you might not think of or knew that, know that can help you stop smoking, such mm -hmm. as acupuncture. Yeah. And I, I think I'm a, fav I'm a fan of this one because it's so, it, people don't know about it a lot. Yeah. But I watched it happen one time and I was <laughs> like, oh my gosh, like, what are they doing? Yes. And then they were like, well, they come, they, they're in treatment to quit smoking and this is what they do. And I was like, Really? So, acupuncture is a natural way to help curb the cravings for nicotine. It can offer relief, especially in the early phase of withdrawal symptoms, like Lauren mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, fatigue, irritability, cravings, nausea, vomiting. Mm -hmm. um, it targets certain areas of the body. The acu so the acupuncturists, they'll definitely target the ears specifically okay. um, because there are pressure points in the ears that can help relieve the cravings for nicotine. And when you say target, I just want to clarify because, you know, yeah. acupuncture <laughs> involves needles. So they're very thin needles that they place at these nerve locations yes. that attack whatever the cravings may be, wherever it is that's helping you. Yes. So if you're not a needle person... This wouldn't be this the best option, be the for, option you. for you. But if you're a daredevil, go for it and see if this works for you. Yep. This is also a great option for people who have tried 
other options, mm -hmm. like Lauren mentioned today, such as the patch or gum, and they have bad side effects or they feel like it just doesn't work for them, it's because acupuncture has no side effects. Ah, oh, there you go. That's mm -hmm. also very good. And it has immediate benefits like the improvement in sleep and mood and you feel better. But like Lauren mentioned, these are needles, so if you're not a needle person, please don't. Don't try this option. However, it, it's it's a really great way, and it kind of puts you in a state of meditation yeah. when you're doing Clear it. Clear your so mind. It, yeah, it's good. Yeah. But please also make sure you see a licensed acupuncturist to do that. Please. Not any regular needles can be used to do that. Another non-traditional um, resource is hypnosis. Mm. So a lot of people, and we're not talking about the hypnosis that you may see on TV where, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you're still aware of your surroundings despite the, you know, things you see on shows. You cannot be, you cannot do anything that's, that's against your will. Mm -hmm. Okay. So during hypnosis for smoking cessation, a patient is often asked to think of an unpleasant situation related to smoking, such as death, lung cancer mm -hmm. from smoking or um, catching the house on fire from a lit cigarette and they put you in a tranquil setting just to let and when and um, one common one is they make you think of the smell of smoking so they'll relate the smell of smoking with something nasty such as like truck fumes or gasoline yeah. and next and they say the next time you smell it you might think you of might it. think of that negative yeah that negative effect along with it but that's one that we don't really see as much yeah. hypnosis and it, a lot of people don't really talk about that as much but we thought we should mention it because it's interesting it is interesting and it, it does work for some people I mean it may not work for everyone but I have spoken with someone who it did work for them at the time they were eight years clean from tobacco and nicotine so you know it, just try again speak with your physician yes try what works best for you <laughs> yep so let's get into community resources and we're going to mention a few around maryland and as well as baltimore city um, we know we could be reaching different cities and states absolutely but definitely please check with your local health departments no matter what city or state you're in and they should have a listing of resources and um, community organizations that provide smoking cessation as well as your doctor's office yeah. they'll have a list of resources as well so let's get into a few and we'll start with our organization here we are your smoking facilitators for the university of maryland medical center as well as the midtown campus yes yes so you can give us a call at our 1-800 number we can find that on our u um, umm.edu backslash community health improvement page or you can give us a call at 410-552 Two four three two to sign up for our next session of smoking cessation classes. That's correct. Okay. Or you can reach us by email at bewell at umm.edu. B e w e l l at umm.edu. We want to make sure that you quit smoking. <laughs> yes. So we provide smoking education, um, cessation classes as well as a few one-on-one -on -one sessions. Okay. So as mentioned before, we have the twenty four seven one eight hundred quit now. Mm -hmm. um, we have the it's a Maryland free services for residents age thirteen years and older. Mm -hmm. So this is something that works for teens, like Lauren was mentioning earlier. Some work for teens and some do not. Um, starting as young as 13, eight, 13 years. Mm -hmm. The hotline is sponsored by the Maryland Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. The quit line can help you quit any type of tobacco use, so smokeless cigars, cigarettes. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. especially because, like you said, NRT is not... Not quite. It hasn't been proven for smokeless tobacco. Right. So, and you can talk to a live quick coach 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and counseling is provided in Spanish, English, and other languages as well. That's great. Yep. So callers are el eligible to receive 12 weeks of free nicotine replacement therapies, such as patches and gums and lozenges. Like, And that's really good because yeah. a lot of times 12 weeks is the duration or how long it usually yep. takes for you to... Um, quit the nicotine or the tobacco products and you know if it starts to work maybe your doctor was you know hesitant about giving you the information mm -hmm. or the products before but they see your progress and they'll say oh well you know if you want to I have heard people they get the 12 weeks for instance for Chantix and then they want to go another 12 weeks just to be certain certain there so again that's speak good. with your physician but that's good that they provide that service yes and the quit line you definitely have to work with a licensed quit coach when get when you get those um, NRT treatments okay, and good. they provide those by mail so we have a different another couple of options this is not for our general doesn't really have to do with smoking education however if you've been a current smoker or you've been a long time smoker I think this information oh, will yes. help you so if your age is 55 through 79 a current smoker or you have quit in the past 15 to 30 years now this comes with a lot of 
qualifications and contingencies. So if you need more clarification on it, please give us a call or email us at BeWell and we can explain it more. Or just leave your comment in the comment section today. So special requirements include, oh, I'm sorry, this is for if you want to receive a free lung cancer screening here at the University of Maryland Medical Center. So special requirements include being a pack of day smoker for okay. the past 30 years. And that can include one pack a day for 30 years, two packs a day for 15 years, or three packs a day for 10 years. Correct. Okay. So please contact the lung specialist here at the University of Maryland Medical Center at 410-328-6366, and they can get you scheduled for that um, lung cancer screening. But if you've still been a smoker and you don't fall within any of those categories or qualifications, and you're not, or you're just not ready to quit, we have options for you to get checked for lung cancer as well or lung screening. It's please contact your primary care doctor. They'll be able to set you up with a chest x-ray that it'll be able to see any abnormalities or anything and refer you to a lung specialist from there. Yeah. Yep. So I think that's a great thing because you want to definitely make sure we know the harms and effects that cigarette smoking has on our lungs yeah. and detection is, early detection is key. Yes. Yeah, early detection can save your life and prevent a lot of things. And I know there are a lot of people out there who they know about the bad things when it comes to smoking and how it can affect your body, but they don't want to know. And I guess they figure if I don't see, I don't know, then it's not there. And, you know, that's not necessarily rational, but it's actually the truth and how people see this. So really just go and get it. Just go that day if you can, if you fit those qualifications. And if not, talk to your primary care physician again like Asante has said, because it's always best to know because you would hate to not know yes. and then be too late and wish you had. So just always put yourself first. Yep, that's a great point. So I could sit here and go through the amount of Maryland resources that we have all day, and it would take literally all day. Yeah, However, really <laughs> we have this wonderful Kicking the Habit for Life information and resources for tobacco and smoking cessation in partnership with the Baltimore City Health Department. We um, have this book here at the hospital, in the Patient Resources Center, and in the Community Health Department, which is the same place. <laughs> um, if you ever need information, it talks about many of the things that we've talked about in the last past five months and what we're talking about today, but it also includes about three to four pages by city and state, especially from county. Maryland and county, um, on the different resources we have, well, whether it's Allegheny and Arundel, Baltimore City, um, Baltimore County, uh, Frederick County, every county in Maryland we have all of the listed resources here. You can definitely email us at bewell at umm.edu if you would like a copy of this book or just leave your comments and we'll get back to you yes. and get you this book out. But yes, we can't go through everything today that's There's in this book. We'd through. be here for three hours. <laughs> So. All right, I think that's all the information I have today. However, like I said, please reach out to us if you would like a Absolutely. copy of this. Absolutely. So this is good. I mean, we did talk about a lot of stuff today, a, a lot of information. But, you know, again, go back, rewind, and check it again when yeah. we end the uh, live session. Um, and just, again, talk to your doctor. If you're really thinking about quitting, talk to them. Let them know, you know, I was listening to the University of Maryland Medical Center's Facebook live sessions, and they talked about nicotine replacement therapies <laughs> and all these other medications and I really want to quit. Can you help me? Just let them know that you're trying and you want to start. And so, yes. you know, and again, contact us. You know how to contact us. We're always here to help you. Yes. So and don't let a little thing like a lot of people may not even have a doctor to contact. Don't let that stop you from quitting smoking. Call us, email us. We will help you. Mm -hmm. We can provide you on different options for patient care. And where you can go um, to get a so. primary care physician. Yep. Yeah? So we're your one-stop shop, and we're here to help. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> All right, so have a good evening. Thank you. Right, bye.